everyone, Leticia here. Hope you're all doing well. Yeah, I was just saying my uh, my Mexican phone never lets me film horizontally, and I know vertical is not ideal for things like YouTube, but it is what it is. Um, anyway, hope you're all doing well. I know I haven't done a live in a little while. Oh man, yeah, noise. Yeah, so. It's just been, it's been a, bis, a bit of a, I don't even want to say busy week because I, I just, I don't know. I, I just was feeling a little bit under the weather. We've had a lot of uh, cloudy days. The past few days have been cloudy again and rainy and uh, here in Playa del Carmen. I am currently in, I don't know if you could call it a suburb or just like a working class neighborhood of Playa del Carmen. Uh, one of the things I've been I was looking for was some sort of school for my son and I'm lucky I found this in-person school but it's you know it's only two hours a day 5 to 7 p.m. Monday through Thursday and it's in a neighborhood quite far away so we've had to um, take the bus or take the cab to get here and he's now in his little class so I'm just walking around for a bit before the mosquitoes uh, bite me <laughs> uh, in the evenings yeah humidity and everything and lots of mosquitoes anyway yeah today as I was looking at the sky I saw some blatant signs of geoengineering unfortunately and I know I've spoken about this on my previous live uh, it does happen here as well it's not as blatant as in Toronto um, as in you don't see the chemtrails but like I wish I could show you guys but you see, for example, like vertical lines in the sky, vertical parallel lines, um, which is obvious indication that they're beaming their electromagnetic, you know, technology at the sky. Um, clouds don't go in parallel lines, guys. Um, anyway, so yeah, unfortunately, we're not uh, free of that here in Mexico. And... But anyway, that's not what I wanted to talk about today. Thanks to those of you who tuned into my little uh, webinar earlier today. I was finally able to do it from our little condo. Um, one of my neighbors beat me to it and got himself some fiber optic internet service. And um, so I'm just sharing that. And it worked out okay, actually. It was, uh, we, I, I feel like I had a pretty stable internet connection, thankfully. So I may not need to get my own connection. I may just share his. Um, and my laptop is back to working after I've taken it to four different texts and somebody tried to like literally cheat me out of, well, well not a lot of money by Canadian standards, but by Mexican standards it was a lot. And um, now thankfully I've become a member of a couple of WhatsApp groups that are, you know, ladies resources in Playa del Carmen. And, and so when I need recommendations, including for the tech guy who finally did help me, um, that's how I went about it. Um, I got recommendations for local service providers. And so that's been really helpful. I even joined like a vegans in Playa del Carmen WhatsApp group. So I know where all the vegan restaurants are at. Uh, it, it, it's still like if you're going to be eating out every night, it's not like, well, you know, depends on everybody's budget. I'm not in a position to be eating out every night because you're paying um, almost Canadian level prices. Maybe a bit lower, but you know, um, it's not what I'm looking for if I'm here in Mexico. I love you too, girl. Mwah. <laughs> Samantha. Samantha is also here in Playa del Carmen. And uh, maybe she'll start doing some live. Well, I know she's been very active on Instagram and doing lots of uh, Instagram and Facebook stories. Yeah, thank you. Um, and uh, enjoying her stay here, which is awesome. Um, so, so what else? Again, my son's school is only a couple hours a day, which is not enough. Any of you who are parents and have little children at home, as much as we can technically work from home, if you are, if you have a young child that's also there, yes, while I can still work, you know, it comes at a cost of him playing by himself or just staring at the tablet for most of the day, which oh, doesn't make me feel good inside, you know? And I, I just haven't had the patience to be homeschooling him. And it's really not what I want to do. I'm sorry. I, I appreciate that some people have the skills and, and the know-how and the willingness. And I, and I guess if I really had no other option, I would do it. But it's not. And my mom keeps telling me, have you done anything with him? I'm like, oh, no. Um, now, that being said, 
so the schooling situation, at least here in Quintana Roo, but, but actually um, pretty much everywhere in Mexico, is that public schools are closed for in-person learning. It's only um, it's only for it's only online, and I'm not a fan of online. Like I said, yes, I suppose I could put Anthony in online in an online school, whether here in Mexico or anywhere else in the world, really. Um, but he spends enough time on his tablet watching YouTube videos and playing little games. Thanks, Sam. I really appreciate it, honey. Thank you. Um, you know, no, I don't want him to spend more time in front of a tablet or, or another device. So um, I'm lucky enough that, you know, just talking to the nail girl the other day, she tells me her seven-year-old daughter is at an in-person school here in Bridal Carmen. It's a private school. So, so the private schools have been at least selectively allowed to operate for in-person learning. Um, and now technically the kids are supposed to be wearing like so some private school not all of them some are still online only but i have i have found out about a, this particular school that has in-person classes and it's like 8 30 a.m to 4 30 p.m um i'm waiting to hear back from the school's principal i'm gonna follow up with her tomorrow if she doesn't call me um but yeah technically the kids are supposed to wear a mask which of course i'm obviously not a fan of and like i'm not gonna agree to that um but uh, you know that's something I'm going to discuss with them um, because you know even to get into the supermarkets here they don't recognize medical exemptions I haven't tried it personally but a friend of ours a friend of us a friend of mine has and they were like yeah no we're not like essentially if you want to get into a supermarket you're supposed to put on in some sort of um, face covering I've been using the mingle mask but since, oh yeah, this is the newest thing they just uh, instituted here. So Quintana Roo, well, all over Mexico, since the beginning, they've been using this stoplight system, which my understanding is they're also now implementing in Canada. So I just read that Toronto is now in the red. Um, yeah, so here in Quintana Roo, we are in the yellow, which is technically, you know, low risk scenario. But just in case, uh, what? the governor here and I guess the health officer have decided to do is um, among other things is they no longer allow minors in the supermarkets in any of the big stores so myself as a single parent I'm being discriminated against I can't take my kid into a supermarket I can Walmart forget about it yeah exactly Jonathan yeah so so I'm you know definitely gonna be looking into options like schooling options for my kid for in-person learning I am not into this online learning especially for young children he's like five and a half almost six no 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 f that anyway so um so yeah so so really the situation is you know the walmart in town has a sign on the door you know no as per official government uh, orders or disposition no minors are allowed and they had a big ass lineup at the door no thank you i'm not uh like i i just like F this. I needed to get a little hand vacuum where I left mine in Canada. I'll find I'll find I'll find it elsewhere. Um, and another supermarket, again I get there and it's like, oh yeah, no miners allowed. Uh, the security guard is like, but I'll I'll watch I'll watch your kid for you. So there were like six, seven little kids at the door uh, being watched by the security guard. <laughs> that doesn't make any freaking sense. Um, he doesn't get paid to do that and I'm not comfortable I know it's I know yeah for sure Jonathan yeah absolutely insane not doing that so so really of course I'm gonna you know even though I'm not yet a resident here I'm going to write to the governor of Quintana Roo who by the way seems like a decent guy but hey fucking pardon my language Tom um, what's his name Doug Ford seemed like a decent guy and for the people when you know before this whole situation started. So the governor of Quintana Roo, I say that he seems like a decent guy. He, uh, when we had the recent hurricane, hurricanes, he did a lot of, uh, he was doing frequent lives on Facebook, just reassuring the people. He, he really seemed like a great leader. Uh, but again, so much of that can be deceptive. You know, like I remember the uh, Andrew Cuomo of New York, of New York, you know, in the early days, he seemed like such a nice, like, leader you know and then New York has just turned into hell um, anyway so yeah 
I, I'm planning on doing most of my shopping. Thankfully, there are small uh, fruit stores, uh, like literally, they call them fruterias, uh, corner shops that sell most of the fruits I need. I'm grateful to be a vegan. Uh, but if I were not a vegan, there are carnicerias. Uh, again, there are these smaller um, owned stores where you can basically do all your grocery shopping. I think I'm going to head back, guys, because I don't want to get lost here. <laughs> um, yeah. Yeah, that's what I'm going to do. And in addition to that, I also got the number of somebody who will do organic grocery delivery. Again, through one of those WhatsApp groups that I'm a member of. So if I need any organic vegetables or fruits delivered to me... Um, prices are reasonable um, I can do that as well and uh, so I mean the past little while has just been still kind of getting used to life here and, and trying to find these support systems um, I did find a babysitter to help me on a part-time basis but she speaks no word of English unfortunately and um, so as a result if I leave Anthony with her he's gonna do the same as he does uh, you know most of the time, which is, you know, watching his tablet. So that's not ideal for me. The the gyms are still open here, thank goodness. Um, again, I was excited about being able to go back to the gym, but that means I have to, again, pay the babysitter to stay with Anthony. Anthony spends more of his time on the tablet. Um, I don't think that's going to happen yet. Like, once I have Anthony's school, I think I'll be able to go to the gym properly. But in the meantime, I'm grateful that I found out um, in my neighborhood there are... Uh, daily Monday through Friday Zumba classes um, so there are I'll show you guys yeah so there are basically these basketball courts that are provided by the city they're all over Playa del Carmen they're covered so even if it rains outside we can still have our class and this teacher who is basically self-employed she only gets paid whatever people give her which is very reasonable like 20 pesos a class it's like super inexpensive um, uh, which is like literally less than two dollars Canadian per class super amazing. So yeah, I could go to daily Zumba classes from 830 to 930 Monday to Friday I've been arriving late and really I have to make an effort I've been freaking out of shape like so many months of no gym no ex no proper exercise um, But I'm really happy that this is available, you know, I can go to these Zumba classes and uh, hopefully uh, work my way to uh, my uh, pre-covid uh, weight and shape yeah yeah anyway um, what else it's to all the uh, Canadian Patriots freedom lovers um, if you I don't know how many of you know this gentleman by the name of Paul from V F R O M M he's the uh, founder of the Canadian Association for free speech I believe that's the, the name of the um, organization you should get on his mailing list. He, he, he puts out, I would say, at least weekly awesome emails to inspire all of us who care about freedom and human rights. And, uh, and he wrote an email earlier today. <laughs> the headline was titled, What's the Point? What's the Point? Because unfortunately, as, as many of you, I'm sure like me you've come across people are like oh yeah I know you're right I know all these globalists are trying to take over but what's the point it's gonna happen anyway this fatalist mentality you know that oh there's nothing I can do they're gonna keep doing whatever they're doing and uh, what's the point let's just not resist at all let's just like really so so I loved his email because in that email he gives the example of a very small resistance movement that he and a few fellow Canadians that care about freedom did and it had to do with actually a German lady that was being prosecuted for speaking um, you know something that was very very uh, easily labeled as hate speech when really it really should have been just free speech because she wasn't being hateful towards any um, particular group it wasn't targeted at any group she was just uh, disputing or, or exposing to like some some historical facts that had happened during the Second World War bottom line this lady was being uh, witch hunted by the German government and and this Canadian um, and the Canadian Association for free expression what it is they did a protest in front of the German government uh, the German Embassy in Toronto and it was just a handful of people but as a result of the pressure that they put as a result of them doing that then 
maybe that wasn't the only factor that contributed, but apparently there was outrage at this case throughout the world and other protests at German embassies. And as a result, all charges against this lady was were um, removed. Okay, and and Paul again, Mr. Paul from Canadian Association for Free Expression, um, F R O M M. He's on Twitter. He's quite active on Twitter. If you guys are on there, and or just look up the organization name. Uh, I would get on his mailing list. He puts out some good stuff. Um, and again, he, he, his message was that you may not know if your one letter, like my one letter to the governor, is it really going to make a difference? We don't know, right? But you're not just one person. Imagine all the other people that are going to take that action. It's going to affect it's going to affect their decision making to some extent. They're going to be like, oh man, I don't have the confidence of the people. Speaking of that, I have, you know, I'm fortunate enough to speak Romanian. My 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 mother tongue is Romanian. I was born in Romania, lived in Romania until the age of 15. So I still obviously feel some connection to my homeland. And I've been watching the growing resistance movement, freedom movement in Romania. And I am so inspired and I'm so amazed. Uh, there is one particular lawyer lady in Romania that is just like, oh my God, she is, fearless you know she is such a freedom fighter she has literally become like the flame of freedom and the the the, the, the hope of romania and it's not just her there are a handful of others but this particular lady diana diana shoshwaka is her name um and, and and what she's encouraging people to do is when it comes to more of these illegal mandates that the government is passing over there flood their mail mailboxes flood their email boxes with your letters uh, of discontent and tell them that you oppose all these measures they need to know that do they do not have the confidence of the people they do not have the confidence of the majority of in this case romanians we can do the same thing wherever we are whether we're in canada in my case here in mexico but um, i'm going to continue um, participating in 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 the freedom movement in canada as much as i can also and speaking of that um a, f a couple of you have forwarded me a petition that mr Paul Polever, uh, Pierre Polever is circulating, which is uh, Stop the Great Reset. I would encourage all of you to sign it. I, he, he, like Mr. Randy Hillier, uh, is one of the few voices of reason in Canadian Parliament. And I, I really have a lot of gratitude for this man, Mr. Pierre Polever. He is the opposition finance critic, as you um, may have come to see. He's just been amazing. And by the way, he is, uh, they are looking for volunteers, including volunteers to put up lawn signs. I signed myself up to do calling. I have a calling app. I can still do all Canada, thank goodness. Uh, so uh, uh, we all can do whatever we can. And why not put our energy behind the movements that we support and, and behind you know the world we want. Um, and, and I get it, like it's not just about resistance. Oh yeah, so one other thing I wanted to share. Um, and, and this idea came to me because I was talking to Mike J. Mike J, as some of you know, he's he's a teacher from Ontario. He's been very active at our protests in Toronto and beyond, Ottawa as well. He has spoken at some of the protests, at many of the protests, and he's an amazing, steadfast freedom fighter. And um, Mike has uh, started his own YouTube channel and he's putting out truthful information and he had asked me to, to help him translate something into Spanish. So we're trying to figure out how to translate this, you know, truthful, inspiring videos into Spanish. I helped him with that. But then it, I just, we just figured out today that YouTube itself allows uh, cross caption in a different language. So even if your audio of the, of the video is in English, you, there's just one little setting there and you can put class captions in, in Spanish or in Romanian. So this is very exciting to me because um, I want to continue creating as much as I can, you know, inspiring content and putting out inspiring videos, even if they're not gonna be on, on YouTube. So I may make them private on YouTube because I know they would get deleted and then maybe re-upload them to BitChute, hopefully. That, I'm still working on that. I haven't gotten on BitChute yet, but I mean, that's gonna happen gonna happen procrastination no no no. it's okay guys one step at a time I'm not gonna put too much pressure on myself um, but anyway 
that is really exciting that that and and by the same token all these amazing videos i've been watching from romania i want to tell those content creators to put english subtitles on those videos because i'm telling you that the message of freedom is so inspiring i had tears in my eyes watching some of these videos one of the videos i watched yesterday oh my god and not like in romania the the agenda has been really accelerated like a lot more than in canada like they just romania unfortunately from what i can see has become like a completely sold out state and thank goodness there's some a, a, a brewing resistance movement but in the meantime that the politicians have really just been abusing the public big time like one you know they they already instituted uh, 11 p.m curfews at least in bucharest i don't know about other cities but 11 p.m curfews and of course, like in many countries, they are completely unconstitutional. Romania also has a constitution, just like Canada, just like Mexico, by the way. Um, and I, I, I watched a video of uh, a freedom fighter, freedom lover in Romania, who, who, who basically was in one of the main plazas. They're just like Nazis, the police in, in Romania. Like they'll, they will find people for not wearing a mask in even in an open area like that is that, that is ridiculous um but this man was like okay give me the fine that's fine give me the fine and they were <sighs> yeah but the title of the video was our passivity will cost us our freedoms our passivity will cost us our freedoms and and people all over the world need to wake up to that fact the more passive we remain, the more they're going to advance their evil agenda. Like, it, it's not, nobody's going to stop us if we don't. We have to stop these evildoers. But anyway, I really love this man's attitude. I was like, okay, give me the fine. I'll take it to court. These fines are unconstitutional. I have, I'm a free citizen. I can walk at any hour of the day. I don't have to, to give you, uh, I don't have to give you a reason as to where I'm walking and why I'm walking. Yeah, I like the fresh air at night. He's like, yeah. Uh, so yeah, a video like that was amazingly inspiring. I'd love to post it. It's all in Romanian. So of course, most of you, unless you're one of my Romanian brothers and sisters, you're not going to understand it. But I'm going to ask the content creator if they could please put like English captions on the, on the channel. I think it'd be awesome. Um, I'm not aware as of yet uh, of any freedom movement going on in Mexico. But again, I was actually, I just had a conversation with a cab driver who dropped me off at here at, at my son's uh, little school uh who was like totally on board with everything i was saying he's like yep i know it's the mark of the beast i know we're living in biblical times i know i know i know people are asleep we need to do something and i told him i have a little youtube channel it's only in english but like i, I want to put spanish subtitles he's like yeah yeah please you know please put some spanish subtitles because he doesn't speak a word of english I'm, I'm blessed that i speak spanish as well yeah I know I've been thinking about it. I'm, I'm gonna, I think that's the, before I start creating actual content in Spanish, I think that's a very first step I can take to put actually Spanish subtitles on my videos. And by the way, guys, big shout outs to our Patriots from Toronto, Tommy Rogers too. First of all, like all you amazing people that have continued um, having protests in Toronto and, and in cities across Canada. I, I have been watching the videos and, and Tommy Rogers too, YouTube channel, you guys know Tommy, he's always there, he's always filming and, and he's putting out all this amazing content. I'm going to ask Tommy if he would consider translating some of his videos in Spanish or putting the, su the subtitles in Spanish. Of course, French would be helpful as well because we all know, well, I, you may or may not know what's happening in Quebec, you know. Quebec, uh, our, our, our brothers and sisters in Quebec are not allowed to protest anymore. Their protests have been deemed illegal and UN police has shown up uh, at at least one of their protests and shut it down absolutely illegal unconstitutional so hola 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 <laughs> um anyway I'm, I'm excited about this class caption thing the fact that we could get our message that we could share that message of freedom across the world with audiences that speak different languages um that's that's pretty much what's on my mind right now i'm looking forward i'm gonna do that like even tonight when i get home i'm gonna start like seeing if it works uh i'm gonna post a little video in case any of you have uh, YouTube channels of your own and you want to give it a try and I'm gonna ask Tommy and another one of our fellow uh, Toronto Patriots Dave he goes by Dave Freedom on Toronto he is a gentleman that plays blast those pre-recorded freedom speeches at the Toronto rallies and they're very well received and uh, he has started his own YouTube channel um, 
yeah it, 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 please follow him i posted a couple of his recent videos um we, you know I, I think one of the reasons oh my god last thing i want to say i think one of the reasons i was literally like feeling down this past week and a half is um like uh, you know like i'm in a sea of people that seem asleep you know i'm here in mexico everybody's freaking wearing masking on the buses on the on the like, you know uh, you know i'm the only one that goes on the buses without a mask myself and my son we don't wear a mask we don't wear a mask in the stores the only like all the small convenience stores like 7-eleven i never bother wearing a mask and thankfully you know what even in canada i have to give some props to 7-eleven they were among the businesses that were most easy going about the restrictions easy breezy so i liked even even in canada during the pandemic like the they they were quite reasonable and here in mexico the best 7-eleven okay i don't know who owns them what have you but whoever owns them they're 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 easy to shop at um so yeah i don't wear masks in any of the stores except the big box stores which have a guard at the door demanding it so since now they're not letting me go in with my kid i'm just not gonna fucking shop at the uh big box stores unless you know unless and until this this illegal discriminat discriminatory 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 a mandate gets reversed you know um anyway i don't know what more um yeah anyway thanks everyone for tuning in much love to all of you amazing freedom fighters and um we are not alone and we will continue aligning our energy towards freedom and and fighting in the name of freedom like we literally are fighting we again i, I include myself in that in whatever way i can we are fighting for the future of humanity we are this is not a joke guys to so every one of you who has studied what the agenda is you know like we are in really critical times and we need to gain strength from each other we need to align ourselves with our fellow our fellow freedom lovers fellow brave human beings and we will turn the tide the, the tide will turn the tide is turning um again i was super inspired seeing the freedom movement in romania they literally have protests beginning like now in in various romanian cities they are launching they've already launched various um constitutional challenges and they have won some of them and some of the measures were reversed i don't know all the details on that but it's a it's an ongoing fight until these criminals these puppets that we have in our governments are going to get expulsed we have to we have to keep fighting um, we have no choice. Uh, and again, uh, uh, last thing, you know, I, I'm here and I'm, oh yeah, yeah, I'm sorry. One last thing I want to say is that after I had posted some truthful comments about like, oh, you know, the pandemic and so on, on one of the ladies WhatsApp groups here in Playa del Carmen, and I got like rebuffed by some zealots. Um, I responded politely I, you know I politely disagreed with the person and said you know I, I basically was complaining about this no children policy and how it's discriminatory and so on. I was like well it's for your safety I bet that woman was definitely not a mother because she wouldn't have liked it um, to 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 be discriminated against as I was but never mind but thankfully a few members of that group reached out to me and is like hey do you know there's basically uh, a truthers group for Playa del Carmen. So yes, so as of two days ago, I am on a WhatsApp group with open-minded, eyes open people from Playa del Carmen and beyond. I'm also on a WhatsApp group called Scandemic. So if any of you are interested, uh, the Scandemic one is worldwide. Um, oh yeah, oh my God. Oh my God, I have like so many things come to mind. The founder of the Scandemic WhatsApp group that I'm a member of is somebody who happens to live in russia at the moment he's originally from south africa he found my youtube videos i don't know how he found out about me uh invited me to join the group he's been posting updates from sochi russia which is where he lives in russia just like everywhere else in the world they have officially mandated like you know masks must be worn on all indoor public places blah 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 he has shown us multiple pictures so apparently to get on a bus in sochi russia there's a sign on the door masks must be worn otherwise you're gonna get a fine yeah He's shown me pictures, I'm gonna post one of them. People on the bus, nobody's wearing a mask. Nobody's wearing a mask. He told me nobody's following the orders. Nobody is. In Russia, people don't give a shit. And I asked him like, why do you think that is? And, and I actually would love to do a little interview because it's like, 
it's amazing. The Russian people, and, and, and he thinks it's like, no, it's not that they, I think just in his opinion, the, pop, the Russian people are just too focused on survival. They just don't give a shit about the pandemic. Like that's the least of their worries. They got bills to pay. They, they just like, oh, well, if I die, I die. I, guess, I don't know what the, but that, that's his interpretation as to why nobody's obeying the, the mass mandates. Like nobody, he's showing me people lined up in line at, uh, at a restaurant, nobody's socially distancing, nobody's wearing a mask, despite the government mandates. You ask yourself, like, what kind of chance does the government in that country stand to implement a mandatory vaccine in a country where, when it comes to the mask mandate, nobody gives a shit, nobody's obeying it, okay? Meanwhile, a country like here, where everybody's obediently putting on the mask, or a lot like Canada, you know? I'm sorry, but I, I am much more concerned. He actually left from South Africa and moved to Russia some eight years ago. He's like, yeah, I had a feeling that Russia is not to be messed with. Now, you know, I, I, I can't share those feelings as somebody who grew up in a former communist country. Um, and I also happen to know about the great famine that happened in Russia, which was politically orchestrated and so on in the early part of the 20th century. Yeah, so, I, you know, I, I would not choose that as my new destination but uh i don't know it was very inspiring to see that the russian people don't the, the russian people don't give a damn about the mandates they don't wear masks they don't socially distance they just keep living their lives it was i'm gonna post a picture for you guys to see as a as a comment to this video anyway much love to all of you stay strong and uh let's continue encouraging and supporting each other in whatever way we can okay much love blessings Mwah.